Today, we're looking at a green ink by Noodlers. It's in their V-Mail series, GI Green. Now, there's timestamps down below, so if you want, you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really does help me for you to check out the entire video. Now, if you're new here, hi, I'm an ink guy, and if you're not new here, welcome back. If you want to see more green inks, down in the description there is a link to all of my playlists of ink reviews sorted by color. There are three papers that are being used to try and standardize some of the writing samples. Those papers are Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia. Let's take a look at the first one, 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does offer some shading. Look at how Fox goes a little bit lighter to a little bit darker. It's kind of nice in quick, going from darker to slightly lighter to slightly darker. It offers just enough shading for you to realize that it is doing, but it's not super standout as that goes. 10 seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, still very nice shading. Look at how dark the K in quick is compared to how light the B in brown is, and brown lightens up as you write through it. Fox starts as a mid-tone and gets very dark, and 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show good color variation, and it's more here than we get in the writing. The smear test says you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. To make sure there's a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with this Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, Jinhao X450 with a medium, and Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pierre Cardin president with a medium nib is inked up, used for a day, and then used to take the notes for this video. Now, let's take a look at the second writing sample, 52 GSM Tomoe River. We do have spots where we see it coming through in the scrubby, but that's not really too much. Otherwise, we really have no bleeding and no, no significant ghosting for Tomoe River. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 16 seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing no color variation left to right, and we didn't get it. The smear test, don't smear on Tomoe River, not if you want to recover that information. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to be learned by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and it's immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see on the bottom a very light blue that's pushing its way up and a very bright green all the way at the top. And that's gathered at the top. But the most interesting part is all the way on the left side of that chromatography strip, you see some yellow poking through. So this is not just a yellow and a green or a blue and a green. This is three different colors being mixed a little bit of a yellow, a lot of a light blue, and then that sort of mid-tone green there. Now the one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked in the water. We still see that slight yellow spot in the upper left of that chromatography strip, but on the bottom we see a lot of the blue really setting in, showing that that might be a permanent color on this ink. Now we're going to take a look at the third standard paper, which is 80 GSM Rhodia Dot Pad. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shade spots. Look at the Q and the K in quick are darker than the rest of the word. Brown starts darker, gets a bit lighter. Fox starts lighter, gets darker. Very nice. Over goes from light to dark. 11 seconds to dry. Medium is a tad bit, just a hair darker than the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, some decent shade. Look at Fox, light to dark. Dog, light to dark. Lazy, dark to light. The, very dark. 
14 seconds to dry. This scrubby for both show good color variation left to right and we do get it in the writing and the smear test says you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing it. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it's handling itself fair enough. We do see a little bit of spread. The lowercase h, you do see a little bit of feathering going on, but if you're talking about notes for in school, that probably would be acceptable. If you're talking about researching the cure for cancer, probably not. Water we see is reactivating and lifting the greens and the yellows off, but that blue from the second chromatography is still staying there on the paper. Now, I did only need water to get this out of my pen, but you do see if you needed it, the pen flush is breaking up that blue ink. It's really just starting to show some of the white of the paper coming through. One third bleach solution, although you're not gonna need it, does completely remove it from the paper, even stains the paper yellow just a little bit. Additional writing samples are done on different papers, and these papers change frequently just to sort of get more experience with different papers out there. The first of these papers today is White Lines paper. We see we get a lot of bleed spots all the way through in the extra fine, the medium, tons in the stub, and of course in the scrubby. So it wouldn't be able to use the back of this paper. It's not really made for fountain pens, but it does not touch the paper underneath, which you at least have that going for you. There is some minor ghosting in when it's bleeding through so much, you can't help but get some ghosting. Despite all of that, the 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading. There's a couple spots that are a little bit darker, but that's about it. And four seconds to dry. Really good news for students. Medium is a tad bit darker than the extra fine, nowhere near as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and five seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing no color variation left to right. We're not really getting it, but the smear test says you could recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. So don't drag your hand, but if you do, this is a good one to do it with. For the inks tested, there is an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's GI Green has a viscosity of 2.41, making it normal and really close to average. If you're interested in how the viscosity is tested and how the bell curve is built, then you can look down in the description where you see a link to that video. The next writing sample is done on Apica CD paper. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade very nicely. Look at the light to dark. Quick goes dark to light to dark. Brown, dark to light to dark. Beautiful and eight seconds to dry. Now medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some very nice shading. Look at how brown goes a mid-tone to a dark R to a lighter OW and a dark N. Gorgeous, 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, well the scrubby the extra fine shows no color variation, although we got more. The medium far left to far right shows some, looks much better in what's written here. The smear test says if you did smear it while you were writing, you could still read it, so good news. To find the average dry times, the writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumbleway River, and Rhodia paper are averaged, normalized, and put onto a bell curve. For the inks that are tested, the average dry time is 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's V-Mail GI Green has an average dry time of 14 seconds, making it normal, but on the faster side of normal. The third writing sample is done on Limon paper. 
we see that we get a ton of bleed spots that are occurring, much more having to do with this paper than it is this ink. Not a lot of show through though, just bleed. The 1.1 is woolly as can be. That's a lot of feathers. My God, that's like baby chickens. It's amazing, really. It's just, yes, that's feathering. Wow. There's no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade, just a metric butt ton of feathers. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub. It feathers all over. Look at the four, look at the jumps, look at the K in quick, look at the BR in brown. Look at the word dog, a dog with feathers, only here on this channel. Four seconds to dry. The medium is about the same tone as the extra fine. It feathers like crazy. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, but there's a bright spot at the end of this horrific tunnel, and that is if you accidentally dragged your hand across the paper after writing, you can practically see everything pretty clear. It went straight into the paper. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's V-Mail GI Green, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice purple from Birmingham Pen Company's Waterford Dusk because I like that dusty purple with this kind of muted green. It makes me feel like it's Joker in faded clothes. So what do I think of Noodler's V-Mail GI Green? This is a decent green with some shading. The tone feels very dull and I'm kind of uninterested in it on its own. I just feel while this is a perfectly fine green, I'll pass on it. I'm very happy that I've sampled it though because you don't know that it's not the right green for you unless you try it out. What nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? Now, it does have some decent shading, but I'm gonna go ahead and drown that shading out with a wet, fine nib to get the darker tone because I feel like that puts the most pleasant green onto the paper. I hope you got something out of this video today, and I'm gonna invite you back tomorrow when we're gonna take a look at Schaefer Turquoise.